I'm Jonathan with Nomadic Cooling. We're over here at HQ3 in Glendale, Arizona. I am pleased to introduce Mark from Off Grid Solutions. He is a Victron ambassador. And before that, he was actually using Victron components in Africa. Yeah. Doing installs in places like Somalia. Uh, North Sudan, Ethiopia, Iraq, Haiti. Okay. Where would we like to start? You want to start with the wires themselves? Yeah, we'll uh, make some cable. Um, put some lugs on and do some torquing. So this is uh, PVC insulation on this. So it is a little sportier. This is four aught marine wire. He actually measured the length of the fitting and then he's going to cut around that length that he marked with his finger. He's going to pull it off to make sure that he didn't actually uh, cut any of the wire inside. Right. Oh, that right. looks nice. And you're gently going to spin that on just go. like so uh, to make this happen quicker. So we're Bang. And we will use the red just like this. There we go. Okay. Where do you like your heat shrink to lie? I get all the surface area exposed there. And generally, it's right off at the slope, the top slope right here. Thing we now, because we bought this heat shrink uh, online, I can tell you this isn't my favorite type of heat shrink. So we've got, you can get it in two to one for the shrinkage uh, with, with glue inside of it. So we've got a 4 aught 5 sixteenths or M8 or 4 aught 3 eighths or M10. Um, usually on most of the uh, stuff that Victron has, the links, the batteries um, have 5 sixteenths or M8. But uh, the 3 eighths will work. But usually I like to uh, get as much surface area. You know, we're back to surf surface area. You know, we have more contact on the battery or on the stud when we go exactly what we need. Oh, that's nice. If we're making those and we need the exact um, orientation, say I'm going like this and then up like that, um, and I want it to go exactly like that, so I will take my uh, handy dandy Sharpie this will get covered by the heat shrink. So while I'm crimping it, I can line those up. That's a good trick. Right, because the stuff with the PVC, sometimes, well, with the other insulation, you can kind of twist it and maybe get it where you want it. Uh, but with this PVC insulation, it, it makes it a little sportier. So this guy's just gonna open up like so, not on the top. Okay, so that, that die looks nice and wide. Some of the dies might be a little narrower and you'd want to probably do two crimps one behind the other. There we go. Let me take a look at that crimp. When we're doing that with any kind of, that kind of crimper or hydraulic crimper, um, we tend to maybe go a little too hard and then this area will squeeze so much, it'll get sharp. It could uh, cut through your heat shrink and we want to leave as much material there around the conductor as we can. So that looks really good. That's, it gives me a warm fuzzy that I do have a good crimp, but not too much where it's sharp. So when we know we've got a good, the heat shrink's working it, that glue, you'll see it melt in there. It'll, it'll kind of glisten. We did this to show you two different ways to do it. Most Victron products, M8, you can use an M10, right. but this gives you more surface area. Right. Right in front of us, we have the Lynx system. We have a Lynx power in, Lynx distributor, Lynx BMS, Lynx shunt in no specific order. Let's start by unscrewing them. You made a valid point that you don't want to unscrew them with an electric screwdriver. Yeah, you don't generally like to do that because we've got uh, stainless steel uh, fasteners here. So spinning these too fast, they'll, they call it gall. It will actually, it will weld and you'll never get it off. It'll break before it turns again. And this is the inside of a Lynx power in, so it doesn't have the fuses. And let's go ahead and uh, and do the correct torque specifications right here. Okay. All of the torques in the Victron manual are gonna be listed in Newton meters. We're looking at 14 Newton meters or about 124 inch pounds. So I can see that the last guy that used this uh, put it away properly, so we want to null it out or put it on zero or the lowest value on there before we stow it away. Were you the last guy to use it? I was. Okay, so you're saying that you did a good job? Yeah, I don't want to get <laughs> cut. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put our negative on. 
Flat washer, lock washer. Brass, flat, lock washer, bolt. That's correct. All right, so these are designed to use at the end. You don't want to try torquing it there. You won't get the correct torque value. So you need to be right where the handle is. And so I'll do it twice. And I'm going to call that good on twice. Ooh, that's nice. It is. That's real nice. Then I'm going to mark this. It says mark. Put a mark. Do you do just the top of the bolt or do you also do the top of the bolt and the nut? You could, but sometimes when we're taking things on and off, you know, I'm going to have a lot of lines on there if okay. I would make a mistake and go and have to uh, put it back on. The only reason I bring it up is in a van, for instance, or right. a mobile application that may be gyrating around. Right. Or... By doing this, by torquing this, you know, we're uh, a, a lot of things that happen if it's loose, you know, fires, it heats up. But if you torque it, at least you know that it was it was tightened and marked it. So that alleviates any of the problems. We are using the smaller uh, diameter hole on this brass fitting right here. There are some lugs that are they're made different, have a different profile, that are going to touch this plastic piece here, and that we're only going to encounter that in the four aught. Um, so sometimes you might have to trim a little plastic off because we want this to fit flat down on there. We don't want it uh, the plastic inhibiting any um, surface contact. On a 4 aught wire, uh, the book says you don't need to use this uh, or you have the option to use this. It's actually for cable management for smaller, smaller wire sizes. But in this application, it seems to work just fine and gives it a nice profile when you take your positive and go just like so. I mean, that looks Looks perfect to me. Looks good. I think we did a good job. Well, let's go ahead and torque that bad boy. Okay. Hope you guys took down some notes of how to torque your Victron components. Once again, my name's Jonathan with Nomadic Cooling. This is Mark from Off Grid Solutions. Guys, if you want to go further in comfort, let's go further together.